Hi, good morning, everybody. Thanks, Dheera. My zip is fully up right now. Thank you. Uh, and thank you, Roko, for this opportunity. Jason, Dheera, fabulous job. You built a great community out here. My first event, I really enjoyed it. Uh, and thank you, Prakash, for giving us this option of this challenge and you know, challenging us. Uh, just a bit of history. I took over Dheera's job in Orange, India, and Prakash took over my job, and I left Vodafone. So we've seen uh, innovation because India has got multiple circles, as you call it. And we've seen challenges in terms of testing with each circle. So we created our own kind of innovative ways, shorter textbooks, one test, one static test, et cetera, at that point of time. And today I'm going to present a bit about what we do at Bix and what our uh, answer to the question Prakash posed for us is there. It's going to be there, yeah. <clears throat> so yeah, okay. It's a little jaded in the, different from the color, okay. So, uh, we call Mannequin Bix. It's a different team which kind of worked in the presentation. I'm here to present it. I've got Jose, who's a colleague of ours, also out here to take questions with us later on. Very quickly, uh, the challenge when deploying roaming is everybody wants to be on footprint very fast and efficient. You want to be cost effective. You also know it's going to be a little, you know, you want great quality. Quality is complex to achieve, but it's critical because it adds to great competitiveness. If you have bad quality, bad experiences, you lose customers. Basic of roaming. The test process today is, what, 30, 13 steps. It's, as Prakash mentions, 30 years old and has it undergone changes. And the complexity is you keep adding more and more layers to it. I mean, we all know that most teams, uh, roaming happens across multiple teams who have different priorities, different, you know, KPIs, KR, and therefore coordination among these guys takes a lot of time, and that's the killer, right? I mean, at the end, you're human beings. Whatever tools we might have, also I believe the roaming, uh, the roaming folks in roaming are a little more older compared to other other industries, and therefore having new tools and new processes may not always be the most innovative or the most easiest uh, path to go forward. I mean. Uh, this slide, I'll show you all of you see that everybody is doing this testing process in one way or the other. Maybe there are changes here and there, but the process is similar for most operators. The point there, though, is that most countries don't have pool of resources. So you've got, let's say, three operators in a country. You have a pool of three or four direct testers, direct testers in that country, and therefore you don't have resources who may be able to have expertise around it. Apart from this, I think somebody mentioned about language barriers. I mean, that's critical, right? We assume everybody speaks English. But if you go and talk to a direct tester in Africa or somebody in India, their understanding of English, the way it's supposed to be spoken, the Queen's English is not the same across the world, right? You have, and therefore, large breakdowns happen there. I mean, uh, like you said, Robert, I think you talked about you know, the Portuguese way of saying C, and that happens across the world. I've seen it happen across. I talked about different priorities, different departments, I alluded to that earlier. Time zones. I mean, it's 10 hours between Australia and Europe. A tester waking up the night doing a test, not in his best form, and you know, in that takes time. Sending SIM cards up and down, etc. All of this. Add to that new technologies coming in, the 5G technology. And I, I think you mentioned about 5G having no tests, but we haven't seen that. We've been in the industry for, 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 for years now. We haven't seen people saying that they'll not do 5G testing. We know 5G is going to be a big challenge in the future. Uh, operators coming back and asking us to test and help us test with them. And I don't see that going away. So it's just adding to the multitude of issues that we already have with regarding this process, right? So what we said at BICS, let's not reinvent the wheel, right? And why? Because it's already GSMA standard. Every mobile operator needs service assurance because you already have a process, you're used to it. This, the, you know, the, the, the management is used to a process, it's all signed off and stuff like that. So let's say we won't reinvent the wheel. And therefore we said, let's try to look at these intelligent people who have good things to say. So Steve Jobs, one of them, he said, do not try to do everything, do one thing well. We said, let's go further. We've asked a really more intelligent person you know, about outsourcing. Any guesses whose response this is? Somebody said this about outsourcing, just a trend, efficient strategy that allows you to focus. Any guesses who wrote this down? Who's the intelligent guy or the lady? Well, somebody talked about ChatGPT, that's the answer. I mean, we use ChatGPT for presentations today. So this is what, uh, the, the fundamental is that we believe that if we are able to move things across to partners or to players or as an industry collaborate to come out with something which can help everybody, that's what we're gonna get into. So we said, let's not 
reinvent the wheel, but let's innovate through people, technology, tools. And that's how we said the analogy I use is, instead of having multiple departments and multiple kitchens across the world, why don't we have the best kitchen with the best pots and pans and the best chefs in the world serving the best dishes? And that's what, that's the analogy we use to launch the Bix Roaming Factory. I mean, this factory has been in process for the last five years. We today, as we speak, do work for operators across the world, roaming footprint, and I, and, and I think I heard one of the judges talking about expanding it further. So I'm gonna talk about the basic tenets of what we do. Pretty simple, we've got three basic modules. One is automation, second is expertise, and third is consolidate. And while I delve into this a little deeper in the future slide, let's just talk about, just about a bit of BICS, right? Our DNA is roaming. 80% of people who work at Bix have been in the roaming industry. My experience, and I didn't talk about where I come from, I've been 20 years in and out of the industry. Uh, as I mentioned, with Vodafone India, Sri Lanka, Africa, a bit of Caribbean. So I've been around, and I've seen the industry from, from, from the day go, right? We've been, we're, we're roaming I did a bit of roaming testing to start, direct testing, and then became a roaming manager and stuff like that. One in two data sessions of a roamer across the world happens on the Bix network. So that gives us a large data lake as an, as, an, as an organization to be able to help greenfield operators to decide, hey, you want to launch, let's say, in uh, uh, let's say a country, let's say in Poland, do you go for operator one, two, or three? So we're able to tell that customer or that operator, hey, in Poland, look at this guy because he's the best guy to work with, his best coverage, we see data trends and traffic. So that Data Lake enables us to talk to greenfield operators. Also, operators who already have services in place, we can tell them what needs to come up next. So that's really an important aspect of what we're able to bring to the table with this. Just a quick thing on the three pillars. On automation, my colleagues uh, in, in thank, great presentation, by the way, three, did a good, good job of talking about automation. So we are a huge believer in collaboration, right? So we collaborate, a lot of our collaborators are in this room today, we collaborate with, the room, with a lot of tools to automate processes, to basically get a cutting edge, you know, technological tools to get us moving away from manual stuff and to, you know, really, uh, how do I put it, streamline processes and practices with our, with our partners. Uh, we, we've got a data build API, which helps us connect through APIs with different tools of our partners. We have a fully fledged IREC testing tool, uh, one of our partners again. We've got our own technology of troubleshooting. So once you do a test, sorry, once you do a test, we're able to figure out if the launch has actually happened. We've, we, uh, and I'm gonna talk about a bit about what we have done with one of our operator, uh, operator customers in terms of reducing test books from those 54 tests to maybe a 20 odd test to be able to you know, make it faster and more efficient. We also are in process of doing a static testing tool. Uh, it's part of the works. In the next quarter, we should have that in our kitty, in our kitchen, as I call it, one kitchen. So that's the part of automation. So that's one of our important components of our solution. The second is expertise. And I think I, I spoke about uh, the fact that the pool of resources in a country is very limited. Now, BICS having multiple offices across the world is able to recruit the best talent whether it's IREC testers, static testers, you know, uh, roaming coordinators, to be able to offer that across to our customers and our uh, clients. Uh, we are able to recruit globally. And the important part, we are able to scale, scale up or, or scale down depending on the customer needs. So the factory is like a factory. It works efficiently depending on what the customer needs. So that is really important for us in terms of expertise. And, and, and I think the last, uh, aspect is consolidation. We're able to bring all the best practices. Uh, we do a Volti test with a, with a partner. We know what has failed before. We can therefore iterate our process to ensure that we do these tests well and these we don't do well. So those kind of intelligence we built into our system. So we consolidate expert knowledge and the tools that the, the information we have from tools and from data to be able to bring this all together. Uh, so and and for our clients is a proper governance structure. You're able to have visible dashboards, commitments. I don't have slides on what our tool looks like, but we can definitely talk in terms of what, what we can offer you. And this obviously, I mean, uh, there's, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a commercial model which works well for operators, and I've got a few case, use cases on that in terms of what we have done with a few operators. But before I go there, we have additional secret sauce. 
And that secret sauce is the strength of our people, right? So we had this customer who required opening in China. It was not happening no matter what. And China, as you guys know, is a difficult place to get an opening or a roaming footprint or a tie-up done. We have local resources based in China who work with the Chinese operator, then they could knock on the doors, get that opened and started off. So that is a really important asset. This, this network of people is spread across the globe. They speak multiple languages and they're able to open doors for uh, folks across the world. <laughs> Proven solution from 2018, it's not something which you've done overnight. I mean, the hackathon was a great place to bring it to the fore. Uh, one of the customers we worked with, and you see this graph is a bit up and down. The reason is that the customer required initially camel launches, and then we scaled the team up to offer that, and they required 3G, 2G, gaps to be filled, and et cetera. So depending on, as I mentioned, depending on what they require is exactly what we had, what we were offering. Another customer of ours was in consolidation mode. They required two or three networks across the region and they wanted to ensure the customer's experience is similar across. So we did a lot of about 700 tests and launches in that one year, basis what they required. So the point I'm making is, we as an organization, as the Big Roaming Factory are adaptable, we are scalable, and we've got the tools, processes, and people to help support the industry. And taking it one step further in terms of, we do a full life cycle management. So Rather than just focusing on roaming testing, we also do contract management. Uh, we, are, we enable negotiations to happen. We do it for a few customers of ours. We are on a table, we're negotiating on behalf of the customer with other roaming partners. Uh, we've got uh, technology, tools, aspects to help bring this all together. So uh, as, I, as another person called Helen Keller okay, said, alone we can do so little, together much more. Now I realize I speak a little fast, so we've got a video at the end. In case you haven't understood what I've said, it talks about it in, in a 15 seconds space. I hope the video plays now though. Do I press it again? Okay. That's my time. Thank you very much. May I invite Jose for any questions you have? I'm uh, purely vegetarian, so my meat won't taste good in case you want to eat lions. So yeah, please over to the judges, your questions, comments, ideas, if you want to win another t-shirt. <laughs> please, come on. Uh, one question about the testing tool. Do you have your own testing tool or you partnership with the supplier? We are partnering with, with a supplier on this one. Okay, and then what is your, uh, the differentiator in your case? Why I would go to Bix and I wouldn't go to your supplier? So we do, a, I mean, the whole process is not just testing, it's a multitude of processes, right? One is talking, getting the customer to talk to you, the partner to talk to you, testing, tagging after that, so we offer all that. And I think importantly, we also have people. Testing is not, just, I don't believe it's just a tool. Uh, you can test on a tool, but at the end, if test goes wrong, you need to call the operator. So we've got all that aspects in place. So the tool is one aspect of it. It's, it's machines, and we've got humans who handle that machine. So that's why we've got, that's what we want, we believe is a success story for us. Mm. But you're, you're welcome to go to the partner. We're yeah. fine, we're happy to Thank have you. that conversation. Thank you. Um, and then the other question I have is um, about the requirements. So is a requirement for an operator to become a customer of uh, Bix as an IPX provider, or you pre uh, provide standalone no, it's, uh, it, roaming testing? Great question. It's standalone roaming testing. We are happy to customize it. If you're an IPX provider, if you're a customer of ours for other technologies, it helps. But otherwise, we're happy to do it standalone. Also. If it's standalone, how is the troubleshooting? Uh, because you have to troubleshoot quite blindly the, without access to the... 
Really? Requires a mic. Can I borrow a microphone? Your question you, is on how do we how do we troubleshoot? Yeah, if you if you provide roaming testing as a standalone uh, solution without uh, an IPX, um, uh, without the customer being an IPX customer, um, how are you troubleshooting? How you yeah. have visibility to the uh, traffic and so on? That's, how a does it a, that's a bit of a struggle. I agree with you. We don't have an answer to that question, but yeah, it's a bit of a struggle unless you've got. Yeah, sorry. Jose Pereira, um, product manager of roaming services. Um, First of all, uh, the testing tool that we provide to the to the customers it brings some visibility, but um, together with the uh, integration with the network, what we do is that uh, we upskill the customers team for those uh, from our uh, IREC testers, and uh, we also for some cases we are flexible, and in some cases we uh, provide a group of testers to the to the customers. So we provide the automation tests, uh, sorry, testing tools. Or also people to work to work with them. Does it answer your question, though? Not really. Oh, yeah. And then I guess we don't we don't have an answer to the question. We don't have troubleshooting. We don't have that part. Okay. Right. Can you tell me? Um, I, I saw in your presentation um, how much efforts you did for some examples you shared already with us. Um, how much time it, it takes? On average, for the best case scenario, if I need to finish a test with or go live with a service, so end to end the process, how much time it will take in the best case scenario and how much it will take in the worst case scenario? That's a very good question. Uh, and maybe I'm not the best one to answer it. Do you know the answer? How long it takes? Yeah, for it depends service by service. There are some services that really are complex and stuck, but uh, in the best case, it's about uh, weeks. I think what we have seen on an average, we've had testing, depending on again, on what service you have, but we have seen it happen in two or three weeks. And sometimes it takes longer time depending on the operator's priority. So at, at the end of the day, we are at the mercy of the VPMN to say, okay, this makes sense. What we can arm the greenfield operator or a customer of ours with information, saying this is an important uh, you know, operator to talk to for a particular country, and we can do that. But at the end, it's about collaboration between all these partners to come together. And we are happy to collaborate with the industry on this. I mean, whether it is GSMA and they require prodding on this to be able to use this tool. I think that what we have under the hood is a multitude of tools available today. And we can bring it all together to be able to solve the problem. Okay, uh, another question is related to the cost. Um, do you have uh, different models for, um, for the, the solution or it's a fixed cost? for example, per operator or per service, because you know some operators, for me, for example, I can pay X amount for one of my top destinations. On the same time, I don't want to pay the same amount if I need to open or just to expand my coverage. So do you have different models for handling this with the operators or it's a fixed cost model? Great question. I've been in the industry for the last 20 years and I did the same. I would, you know, been here in heaven to tie up with this gentleman in T-Mobile who was refusing to tie up with me for so many years. But yes, we do have, we have flexible cost structures available depending on the needs. And at the, we can also look at revenue share models in the future, which can help. It says, okay, if you think it's important, then give us a share of the revenue or whatever. But there are, we are very flexible in the models we operate with to be able to help the customer. At the end of the day, if you've got the use case I've told you about 200, 300 launches, People have seen benefit in the process. I mean, uh, as this roaming business scales up and costs balloon out of proportion, this is a really good option for us. So yeah, to answer your question, we do have flexible models in our kitty. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank you for the outsourcing quote. Uh, I think uh, uh, the um, our, our industry is never too much reminded uh, of, of the good things about uh, um, outsourcing. And uh, the use case of testing is really um, a great one because as I was discussing during the, the, um, the coffee break uh, with someone, it is for uh, an operator, very difficult to attract and to retain talent on the testing uh, uh, job. Uh, 
um, it's um, very hard for someone to be motivated at doing this job, and especially in a, a, uh, inside an operator where this job, in some cases, I hope there are exceptions, but usually is not very uh, well, I mean, it's not the, the, okay. the guy you are willing to promote first. Yes. Uh, so if there are companies where people who make this crucial but uh, undervalued job um, it can be valued, uh, can be better taken care of, those are the specialists such as you. So it's, a, um, I think outsourcing is a very good solution for, 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 uh, for, for testing, uh, together with the uh, optimization that we have uh, already um, discussed. I believe you, you brought us here um, the technology or the en enabler, but I would like to challenge you to work more on the part of overcoming the things that we have already said are hindering this uh, progress. Uh, I believe the cost is an, uh, uh, an issue and the model uh, is an issue. Um, and also, um, uh, I, I believe in, in the cases where the, the parties are your customers, or at least one of them is your customer, you may have an advantage, but if neither party is, a, is one of your IPX or whatever, or clearing customer, for instance, you will find the same uh, communication issues that the operator is, is, um, is facing. Maybe less, because you have more scale. Uh, but still, I, I think more work would have to be, more value would have to be added there to, to, to really convince the operator that you would be doing a much, so much uh, uh, better job than the operator um, itself. Um, and that's, uh, that's it. Uh, other than that, uh, my last remark is, it's uh, great to see that there's competition in this field because Unfortunately, there aren't enough um, automation, testing automation vendors out there. So uh, thank you for the comment. The outsourcing part was a brainwave with chat GPT, so it worked. And I think it's really important for the industry. I have suffered through that process when I used to be Vodafone uh, India head for roaming. And we had to actually, and it's, it's a huge task, right? Taking people away, giving some jobs somebody else. The second comment about training people, I'm completely bang on. The network engineer is the lowest uh, you know, in the value chain of the CEO to say that can he be promoted. Therefore, the motivation is important. And we're talking about people out here, not technology. And, and I think what, what I saw with BICS is that we celebrate people, we celebrate communities, and we're able to bring the best out of people. And because they work in a similar industry, they're having similar conversations, they're coffee table conversations about, you know, how do we do this test better? So that's, it's far more, uh, they feel more involved and communities are an important part. Uh, you, to your point with regards to cost structures, we are addressing it. It's not that we don't address it. A and maybe we don't require to be an IPX or a, you know, provider for us. We, and you're right, we, we, we got about 35% of the IPX world traffic, 50% of data roaming happens in our network. So we are able to obviously look at a lot of aspects of it. And from a cost perspective, I think the reason we're able to say we're not the best, but we're happy to collaborate with our partners is because we, are, we have that scale. We're able to open up doors to, uh, to even people who are not our customers. I mean, we are able, because of the, the brand of Bix, we're able to open up doors, have conversation, and bring that to the fore. So thank you for those comments. Appreciate it. And we take your feedback on board. Um, yeah, I need to ask you about, um, are you doing all of this uh, testing process remotely or uh, in some cases you need to send someone to the premises of the operator or it depends on the agreement between you and the operator? So at the moment it's all remote. It's the tool we do testing processes, not the most efficient and I don't know why we do testing the question that you raised earlier. So it's remote at the moment. And, and we already have offices in multiple parts of the world. So if we have to go, we've got people in every, you know, every, in every continent. We've got an office in Africa, Middle East, Asia, Europe covered, US covered. So we can, if required, and the need is that you want this test done in three, in three weeks or three years traveling, we have the liberty to do that. I mean, there is obviously options available. Okay. 
are you able to commit for a certain SLA between you and the operator for the number of opening during, for example, one year? And if I, I came to you and I asked that I need 200 services for one year, and this is the SLA, and um, are you accepting this or not? So it's a negotiation. It's a conversation. I mean, if your SLA is going to be uh, founded not on facts, and you cannot do, you've been doing 20 operators in the last five years, asking for 200 is going to be a stretch. But we'll, we definitely have a SLA commitment across all our customers, across all services. And this is one of the services we offer an SLA to. The customers we have, the two examples I showed, we have SLAs written down strictly. And it's a conversation we have. Um, now that you mentioned, again, uh, how big and worldwide based your uh, uh, team is, and because I know that there are other vendors here that have people spread all around, I would like to um, challenge you or give, give you an, uh, an, a, a business uh, uh, idea. Um, we uh, sometimes need, when launching, for instance, a new bundle, a new retail offer, we sometimes need to um, travel ourselves, not myself, but the, the marketing uh, guys, need to, to, to travel uh, uh, to a different country and often to a non-regulated country, so to Morocco, to Switzerland, to Monaco, those are the destinations I, I, I remember, to perform experience testing, uh, um, loading, reloading, uh, exhausting the, the bundle, blah, 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 blah. Um, and there are, there are players out there with, which are offering this service, but in, very limited geo, uh, in a very limited number of geographies. And they are asking for uh, uh, relevant money for, for that. Uh, why don't you guys on your own or partnering? Because I, I guess if you partner, you will be covering literally the whole world. Offer such a service. You would take up a mobile phone, use a, an eSIM from um, uh, our network, for instance, and uh, performing that experience um, um, t test. And uh, we, would, we would be saving money on travel. Maybe our product manager will, will, wouldn't be as happy because he likes traveling, but uh, the... the, the <laughs> <laughs> no. so, um, uh, if I get that T-shirt, I will offer to Julio. <laughs> uh, because we had here a lovely coincidence. Um, this lovely lady sitting next to me is married, I found out yesterday, to a former direct tester of ours who managed to develop a wonderful career abroad. Um, but um, it, was, uh, it was indeed nice um, finding out that um, um, uh, because we didn't know each other. And it was the first thing uh, we exchanged. Thank you. So first, th thank you for that feedback, it's a great idea. T-shirt definitely deserve, I mean, if you don't mind, Zero. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. But I think we, we, we can definitely look at, look at doing that. I mean, as you mentioned, we do have people in different parts of the world and we can look at an option. And at the end of the day, it, it's about value, the value we bring, right? The value could be lower cost for your, than your person's traveling there. So we can look at the idea. We don't have a thought right now, but we can definitely look at the idea.